Welcome to Mount Zion Baptist Church's live stream. Our mission at Mount Zion takes its inspiration from Ezekiel 34, 16. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed. With the help of modern technology, we can gather and virtually praise, worship, and minister God's Word. If this is your first time tuning in, we would like to give you a special welcome. You could have picked any church's live stream, but you chose ours, and we thank you for that. Our ministry is to spread God's Word throughout the world, whether it be in person at our church or virtually on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share us online at MountZionHudson.org and on social media via Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch TV. Please share this with your family and friends, and thanks again for joining us. We appreciate it, and we appreciate you. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here this morning. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to Mount Zion Baptist Church, particularly if you are a guest with us this morning. We'd like to extend a special welcome to you, and we'd like to let you know that there are guest information cards in the Welcome Center and in the pews in front of you. So if you would, please fill one of those out so we would have a record of your visit. Uh, we have a lot of announcements this morning. Uh, the first is, is that we have two slots available for the Center Kid Camp. So if you know anyone who's interested in sending their child to Center Kid, please have them contact me no later than April 28th. That's next Sunday. Uh, there is an XYZ lunch immediately following the worship service this morning. There is a policies and procedures meeting this afternoon at 4 p.m. And we have our quarterly business meeting tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, the Caldwell Baptist Associational Spring Gathering will be held this Thursday, April the 25th, here at Mount Zion at 6.30 p.m. Uh, there's a men's cornhole tournament and fellowship meal this coming Friday, April 26th at 5.30 p.m. And I've been told that today is the deadline to sign up for that, and we need to have an accurate count of who's going so we can order uh, the food or prepare the food. So, and also I've been asked to ask you if you would bring your cornhole boards. If you have cornhole boards and uh, you wanna participate, please bring those. Uh, Baptist Men's Day is next Sunday, April the 28th, and the men's choir rehearsal will be that morning at 8.15 a.m. Uh, the Widowed Friends Dinner with the Deacons will be held Saturday, May the 4th at 5 p.m. Please sign up in the Welcome Center if you plan to attend. 
Uh, WMU will be having a bake sale on Sunday, May 5th in the Fellowship Hall following the morning worship. And this is to help Gracie Stamey with the cost of attending the Southern Baptist Annual Meeting in Indianapolis, Indiana in June. So please come out and help with that. Uh, there will be an XYZ lunch at the Ponderosa on Saturday, May 11th, and the bus will be leaving the church at 10 a.m. and returning at 3 p.m. So please sign up in the Welcome Center or with an XYZ committee person. Uh, also, please notice the Vacation Bible School volunteer sign-up sheet in your bulletin. Please use that sheet to indicate where you are willing to serve. We need uh, all the help that we can get with VBS, so please sign up. And the dates are July 14th through the 18th. And then please take special note uh, that we are taking up a lo love offering for Dean and Linda Story next Sunday, April the 28th, to show our love to them and help with uh, extended medical expenses. And then I also wanted to say thank you to everyone who participated in Operation In As Much uh, yesterday. It was a wonderful time of community service, uh, and we handed out 100 pizzas, I believe. So um, thank you for that. So are there any other announcements? Good morning. Um, I'd just like to let you know, before I make my announcement real quick, uh, please plan to support Gracie. She represented our church so well yesterday at a state WMU meeting, got up in front of all those ladies and gave her testimony. It's an amazing thing, so please make sure that, that you do support her so that she can continue in her ministry. Um, you would have been so proud. What I need to tell you is this. Forgive me, I forgot to bring all of my material, so I'm going to give you what I can remember and ask you to contact me if you need more details. Um, in May, on May 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th, it's the Tuesdays in May, we are going to offer a Jesus Family and Me class. This is for children ages 6 months to 18 months. It is for anybody, everybody, all people that we can get to come. Um, what It'll be a 30-minute class. It will involve music, language development, skill development, all kinds of things. But what I would like to give to parents is knowledge that was given to me as a young parent about how music can help your child develop everything skills from uh, sports all the way up to mathematics skills begin when they are babies so if you are interested or you know someone else who is interested please get in contact with me um, I do need to sign people up if I get more than 10 people per class it gets to be too much and I can't give one-on-one -on -one help um, so I want to do that I really appreciate it thank you Thank you, Ms. Wesley. Uh, are there other announcements this morning? All right, uh, well, let's do some celebrating. Uh, did we have any birthdays today or this past week? No birthdays. How about anniversaries? Any anniversaries today or this past week? Happy anniversary. <laughs> All right, at this time, I'd ask you to please rise so we can have our time of fellowship. Yeah. 
Yesterday, now, and always. Let's sing together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
don't you? Good morning. Yeah. How are you? I know, you know. You have to keep up with me, don't you? How's everybody okay this morning? Did anybody get wet coming in? No, you know why? A little, well just your feet, right? Because we got some of the best, best greeters in the world. You come right on up here, baby. Yeah, there you go. Because they come out with those umbrellas. I love them. That, that is such a ministry. No, I love it is. Your whole body got wet. Well, let me tell you, my umbrella carrier kept me dry, okay? Guys, today is such a special Sunday, and, and I want you to know I have learned some things about myself. Are you ready for this? I used to think that the greatest love that I ever had was children's ministry. I Don't used to think, think well, yeah. Pretty much my entire life. I was about 16 when I figured that out. Is that Don't you still crazy? Think that? I do still think that, but I've had to add to it. Do you know what I have discovered? I also love people who are XYZ age. I didn't know how much I loved them till recently. Okay, let me tell you how I figured this out. So, Every once in a while, God asks you to do something outside your comfort zone. You ever had to do that? I bet you have, because you've helped with mission stuff, and I know some of you have had to try to sing when it's not your, when you weren't sure you could do it, but you did it anyway. So sometimes God asks us to do that. So I got asked to do that. I had to do some of that yesterday, and, and, and I was scared. I was nervous, and my good, good friend who was praying for me at home sent me this text, and the text said, Wesley, you're all right. Find you an adult that is adultier than you and hold on to them. There's a lot of those. I know it. <laughs> there are. Listen, I am still on you about the whole at your age coloring big thing. You better behave. All right. So, yes, there are a lot of those. But about the time that she sent that, I looked up, and this older lady came waddling right into my room. She was coming to see me and hear what I had to say. She was an older lady. She was not even Mr. Dirk's age. She was older than that, okay? She was an older lady. And so she, she came to hear what I had to say, and I thought, okay, Lord, that is my adultier adult right there. That is the one, and she was. Through everything that I had to do, she was so supportive and so loving sitting from her chair, okay? So I had figured out that I get very passionate when I talk about children because I think you guys are so important, and youth they're so important, and I get really passionate when I talk about our older folks because they are so important. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because people my age, and I'm at the upper end of that age. I'm, I know I am. You don't have to. Okay. But people my age, people, people who are helping to raise you and try to do that thing. You see, we're a bunch of dummies. I'm just telling you straight like it is. We don't know what's going on half the time. We're still trying to figure this thing out. You know, and if it wasn't for you guys who were pushing us forward because you're going to grow up no matter what, we better figure it out, hadn't we? Yeah, we better, Charlie. We better figure it out. And if it wasn't for all of these senior adults who are in front of us pulling us forward saying, you can do this, it's going to be okay, where would we be? What would we do? You guys are so important, and they are so important, and I want us to remember that. Now, let me tell you about one of the most important senior adults in my life. Her name was Miss Ruby, okay? Now, what you need to know about Miss Ruby is she was in a country western show in Nashville for her whole life. She did backup singing, and she did a little dancing, and she did all of this. 
I can open that. Yes, ma'am. And she did a little dancing and a little stuff like that. But when I met Miss Ruby, she was much, much, much older. She was not dancing on stage anymore. But when I saw Miss Ruby, she always had on her great big dangly earrings, and she always had on all of her flashy clothes because she was she was just like that. She liked to, to put on the put on the dog when she came to church, and she looked. No, that's my sister. And she looked so pretty. But what I remember most about Miss Ruby is Miss Ruby would come up to me and she would say, Wesley, God's got plans for you. Don't give up. Because I was in college at the time and college was not my friend. Not my friend. It was hard. And I was studying hard stuff. And she would say, Don't give up, Wesley. God's got plans for you. Yes, ma'am. I believe it was not your friend. It was not my friend. And so Miss Ruby would say, I would write Miss Ruby a thank you note, and she would say to me, Wesley, I'm going to put that in my white Bible. She had a special white Bible where she put everything that was important to her. And when Mr. Dirk and I got married, I had that white Bible in my wedding because that's how important she was to me. So I want to do something different this morning. I would like for all of you who are not XYZ age, in other words, if you are not 55 and older, right, right, Miss Anna, I said that right, didn't I? Okay, if you're 54 or younger, would you stand up? If you're 54 or younger, stand up. Now, do you see all these people who are so important? Look at them. Look at them. That they're important. Let, let's give them a hand. Okay, you may be seated. Now listen, when it's time to go today, when it's time to leave church, I want you to find somebody that looks like they have the wisdom of the years. And I want you to thank them because without them, we would not be where we are. People like me might still be sitting in a pew and not know how much I love children. I might not know how much I love the senior adults, okay? I know I am. Bless your heart. She said I was crazy. There we go. All right, let's pray. Ready? Dear Lord, I want to thank you so much for these beautiful, beautiful souls that you have allowed us to keep with us for so long. Lord, the wisdom of the ages, the knowledge of your word. Lord, they've learned so much that we have yet to learn. Please help us to love and respect them. Lord, I just lift each of them up to you. At this stage in their life, there are aches and there are pains. And, and I know some days it's not easy to get up and go to church, but yet they do it anyway. They're such a shining example for us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I'll fly away. If they would mind if you sing along with them. I think this is a very familiar song. We've kind of pepped it up a little bit, so I think we can, you can tap your toes, maybe clap, things like that. So I think you will enjoy as our XYZ choir sings, I'll Fly Away.
us pray. Dear our Father, I just thank you for everyone that's come out today in this rain to come together to worship, dear our Father. And I just thank you so much for what you do for people like me, these seniors that's, that I've, that's been lost in the past, but the ones that keep struggling coming, dear our Father, with the walkers and the canes and all. What inspiration it is to people like me to continue to keep trying. And for the ones that's at home that can't come out, that's homebound, and there's a lot of sickness going around, dear Father, I just pray for them and let them know that we, we still love them. And dear Father, I just pray that you'll continue this service. Bless Robert as he speaks and just lay upon his heart what he has for us. Just thank you so much for what you do for us. In your name I pray, amen. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody? Isn't it wonderful to be in the house of the Lord today? I got a couple observations I'm going to tell you about before we sing. First one, got up early this morning. We had to be here at 5.30 at the church. No, I'm just kidding. It was 7.45. Anyway, I got up early this morning. I'm walking out to my car. It's raining a little bit, right? Who all here has a driveway to their house? Who here has any cracks in their driveway to their house? What do you have growing in those cracks? Weeds, right? Mainly, mainly weeds, right? I brought this up because it just struck me this morning. I just had to tell you. I just had to tell you. Because, you know, I weed eat those weeds out, and I put a little uh, um, what's that stuff? Roundup on that stuff. But we have, next to our garage, the, where the concrete reached the door going up right there, we had a flower come out of that crack last year, okay? Purple, you know what kind of flower it was? A petunia, okay? Purple, beautiful, okay? I didn't have the heart to, to weed eat it down, to be honest with you, but it's kind of out of place. Didn't think enough, no. Winter comes. This year, there is probably 20 flowers coming out of that crack. And I'm telling you what, it does my heart good. It is absolutely beautiful. I don't, y'all like flowers? I mean, I love flowers red and green and purple and whatever the color is. But my point is, God knows what he's doing. He gave us some rain to nourish my little flower. <laughs> and I'm going to keep it there. If you come to my house, it kind of looks out of place, to be honest with you, but you know what? I, I don't care. <laughs> That's just the way it is. That's the first observation. Second observation. You know, when I grew up, you know, I played sports, basketball, baseball, the whole thing, sports, I work out, and I do this, and I do that, try to stay in shape and to be good, and I was brushing my teeth this morning. I've gotten old. <laughs> I get to sing in the XYZ choir. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, God has a purpose for my life and a purpose for your life. The name, yeah, the name of the sermon, or the sermon, the uh, Sunday school lesson this morning was Renewed. I never forget this. There's a reason this happened, I'm telling you. Renewed. He is going to renew that flower. He's going to renew my life. And one day when I go to heaven, I'm going to, I'm going to lose this. <laughs> I'm going to have my hair back. And I'm going to be jumping around with God. Just thought I wanted to tell you that. The name of the song that we want to sing is called Wonderful, Merciful Savior. He is our counselor, our comforter, and our keeper. I hope you enjoy the message.
11, verses 28 to 30. Come to me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Wow. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Good morning. It's good to see everybody here today. Welcome. So glad that you came out in this storm. It's not really a storm, you know. <laughs> Just wanted you to know that I knew it's not a storm. But we're delighted to be together. You know, Miss Wesley, I thought, since this was XYC, XYZ Sunday, that you would have called XYZers down here <laughs> to do us. But then I thought, well, they'd have to get back up somehow <laughs> if they sat in the floor, and that might be more than we could handle. It's good to see everybody here. Turn your Bibles, please, to Joshua chapter 14. Uh, this message, I, by the way, you may not realize this or remember that I spoke at a XYZ service about three years ago, maybe something like that. And, and my sermon title was ABCs for the XYZs. Now you remember every point, don't you now? I know you, you bring that back up. Well, it's not going to be like that one at all. Stand, please, if you're able. Uh, that will help keep you alert and awake, too. Um, reading from Joshua chapter 14, beginning with verse 6. Now the men of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me? I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my brothers who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt with fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly, so on that day Moses swore to me, The land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance, and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time I said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the desert. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still strong, 
today as I was when Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the, the Lord promised to me that day. You yourselves heard that when the Anakites uh, were there and their cities were large and fortified, but the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron his, as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the, the, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba, after Arba, uh, who was the greatest man among the Anakites. The land has, had rest from war. Father, we thank you for the example of Caleb for us this morning. And that there should be no barriers, no reasons why we cannot continue to serve you into our uh, senior years. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege to share with this congregation. We thank you for everyone who's here, regardless of age or what they think of their qualifications, Lord, because you have made us in your image and you have given us a work to do. So help us to be about it today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated, please. How many of you have ever read Tom Brokaw's book, The Greatest Generation? Anybody? Oh my goodness, I see one. There's two hands up, me and you. Uh, and so we've read that book. In 1998, Tom Brokaw, who was the, uh, uh, the anchor of NBC News, wrote a book called The Greatest Generation. Uh, he explores the stories and the characteristics of those who grew up during the Great Depression. Uh, he tells the real life story and the, um, uh, the characteristics of those who lived and worked and fought during World War II and then came home to rebuild the economy of the U.S. and to, um, to get things straightened back out again. Brokaw writes, I believe this is the greatest generation any society has ever produced. These men and women fought not for fame and recognition, but because it was the right thing to do. Characteristics of that greatest generation were listed. Personal responsibility. I don't know why it was listed first, but it probably ought to be. Personal responsibility. These folks took responsibility for who they were and what they wanted to happen in the world. Another characteristic was humility, work ethic, frugality. That means they didn't spend a lot of money. Commitment integrity, and self-sacrifice. Nothing was given to that generation. They had to do it or die on their own. Today we're celebrating the XYZ group, those who are 55 years and older. And so since Miss Wesley had the young folks stand up, if you're 55 or older, stand up and show them you can do it. <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much, thank you. That just thrills my, my heart to see that many stand up, but it also scares me to death. <laughs> and I'm serious. We've got a great senior adult group, active, moving, caring, involved. Are we teaching our younger generation to follow us, to take our place, to walk in our shoes, to do the work that you have been doing all this time. It's very, very important that we do that. Now, in case you are wondering, unless you're at least 100 year old, you're not part of the greatest generation because that was listed as those who were born in uh, the year 1900 to the year 1924, I believe. Anybody born 1924 or earlier? Didn't think so. So we're not actually part of the greatest generation, but I can tell you that most of us were raised by people in that generation. My mother was born in 1908. My dad was born in 1909. Uh, they were part of that greatest generation. Uh, they were unique and different, and, and there are plenty of books out there to tell you that. Now, since then, we've got different names for, I'm part of the boomer generation, the largest generation that's ever been born in America. 
And after that, they've been going downhill to X, Y, and now Z have come along. <laughs> and they're going to start with the French alphabet next, I think. To, they, I don't know why we need to separate each other like that, but, but, but it's happening. Uh, Caleb was not part of a great generation either. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was part of what we might call the lost generation because most of them were lost in the wilderness after they disobeyed God. God sent them back out for 40 years into the wilderness, and most, most of them except for Joshua and Caleb didn't make it back to the promised land. They were lost in the wilderness. Joshua and Caleb were the only ones to survive the wilderness and claim the promised land. In this text, Caleb is now an old man, uh, relatively at least, 85. 85 is not nearly as old as I used to think it was. Uh, it's the closer I get to it. Yet he demonstrates, even in his advanced years, the characteristics uh, of that great generation. I hope his example would inspire us as well as we face the future, as we face those things which aren't so pleasant in our golden years. Caleb, number one, Caleb was not discouraged in his old, older years by obstacles. And age was one of those obstacles that sometimes trip us up and, and cast us aside. Old age can be an obstacle to deal with. He was 85 year old, years old, and yet he said, I'm as strong and healthy and vigorous as I was when I was 40, and just as willing to tackle the responsibilities and to do the service that need to be done for his nation. God does not discriminate on age by age. He called and he used old people. He called and he used young people as well. Noah, Abraham, Moses were well advanced in their years when they had their most productive years uh, as God's leaders. Chuck Swindoll is a preacher that I listen to every Sunday when I get home from church. I want to hear at least one good sermon. Uh, and so I always turn on Chuck Swindoll from the uh, Stonebriar Church out in Texas. Uh, I just learned this week that he's announced his retirement. He is presently 89 years old and can out-preach most any other preacher I know of in the country. Now, he's going to continue to be the preaching preacher, but they're handing over the leadership reins to uh, another guy that I've heard preach is pretty good as well. David Jeremiah, a lot of us listen to J David Jeremiah every day or we read his books. He is presently 83 years old, still pastoring a large church, uh, taking trips all over the world, preaching, uh, leading uh, conferences, writing books at 83 years old. Billy Graham was actively involved in evangelism well into his 80s, even into his 90s. Age sometimes becomes a factor for us, uh, but not always the main factor. Our health, our cognitive abilities sometimes become greater issues than even the number after our names. Once uh, health and cognitive abilities can throw us down. But it's also true for young folks as well. Uh, 1 Timothy 4.12 was the motto for our youth at Yadkin while we were there. Uh, they called it TM 412. Don't let anyone look down upon you because you are young. But set an example for believers in speech, in love, in faith, and in purity. Be an example. Don't look, let anybody look down upon you. You're young or because you're old. Age has nothing to do with it. It is our willingness to serve and to follow the Lord. Jeremiah, Josiah, Joseph, and Mary in the scriptures all were very young when they got called to serve the Lord. So God is not worried so much about our age as he is about our willingness to serve him along the way. This church has been blessed with a great leadership group, uh, both among the young and among the not so young. And that's wonderful. But Caleb would say to us, don't worry about your age. Just do what God gives you to do and let everything else fall into place. Soon you're going to meet a prospective pastor. Three or four weeks. Well, five or six weeks. I have met him, but I don't know how old he is. 
And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how old he is. If he is God's man and God has called him and you're trusting God to call God's man, then that's all you need to know is that God has the right man at the right time for you. You have to trust God with this. So it doesn't matter about age. We Sometimes we put a lot of criteria on, on ministers and folks about their training or about their uh, age or how many youngins they got. Not really. Uh, but uh, uh, they like to have uh, those with, with lots of youngins because it builds up the children's departments, you know. Uh, all they need to know is that God has called that person. All you need to know is that God has called that person. You can trust God to send you the right person along the way. But there were other obstacles. Conflict was one of the obstacles that Caleb had, Caleb had to deal with. Conflict among God's people. Can it really happen? Can there really be conflict among God's people? Well, who would have thunk it? <laughs> and every church I've ever been in, there's been conflicts. There's problems. There's issues that happens between members and all those kinds of things. Just like it happened in Caleb's days as well. Uh, Caleb and Joshua were part of 12 spies that were sent into the promised land. And they came back and said, man, we can take this place. God's going to give us a great land. But 10 of those guys said, no, we can't do this. There's giants there and we're afraid we can't. And they turned everybody against the positive report and they got lost in the wilderness for 40 years. They missed, they missed the blessing of God because they didn't think they could do it. And they brought conflict just think about Caleb and Joshua, those 40 years wandering through the wilderness, struggling for water and for food and, 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 and all these complaining people. And they were thinking, those 10 guys that eat at our table every night, you know, we could just scalp them alive uh, for what they did to us. But we don't really see any attitude about that, do we? In Caleb and Joshua, they simply followed the Lord as he led them through the wilderness until all those naysayers had died. And then God says, it's time to move in. And Caleb says, I'm ready. God promised me something and I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to let conflict or disagreements or issues within the congregation stop me from what God has called me to do. It doesn't matter if you get along with everybody in the church. It doesn't matter if you, if you have an issue with a, a brother or a sister. Are you being faithful to the Lord? That's the only thing you've got to ask. Am I doing what God has called me to do? Am I the person that God wants me to be in this congregation and this, this world? There was also conflicts from the outside. There were giants out there. They, in, in Genesis chapter 6, they were called the Nephilim. Later on, they became the Anakites, named after the father of their tribe, Anak. And these were superhuman people. These guys, well, you met one of them individually in the, in the story of David, Goliath, who was nine feet tall and weighed probably at least 300 pounds uh, or a lot more than that, was one of the descendants of the Anakites, uh, these giants who lived in the land. And, and, and the people said, we're like grasshoppers before them. They'll crush us. And we can't go because they're bigger than we are. But Moses, but Caleb said, Moses promised me this land and with God's help, I'm going to claim that land. The whole world seems to be against the church in our day. So what? So what? Greater is he who is in within us than he who is in the world. God is bigger than all of our problems. God is bigger than our conflicts. God is bigger than our issues. God is bigger than the world. We have to believe and trust in God along the way. We serve a great God. He's able to protect us and give us victory over our enemies. So first, Caleb was not discouraged by the obstacles he faced. Secondly, Caleb followed the Lord wholeheartedly. Uh, you'll see that three times in those, you remember what I said just a few weeks ago? When you see something repeated over and over again in the scriptures, there's significance there. Uh, Caleb was wholeheartedly devoted to the Lord. By his own testimony in verses 7 and 8, Caleb says that. 
I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant uh, of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea. I brought him back a report according to my convictions, but my brothers went up with me and made the hearts of the people melt with fear. But I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Not only did he confess that, but Moses also testified to that as well. In verse 9, Moses that day answers me, the land on which your feet have walked will be an inheritance and that your children forever because you have followed the Lord wholeheartedly along the way. And then Joshua in verses 13 and 14, blessed Caleb with the land he was promised because Joshua says, you have followed the Lord with your whole heart. Now you go back to Numbers 14 when this actually started before they went into the wilderness. God said uh, that he was bringing judgment on those who disobeyed him. He said, but because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and followed me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went and his descendants will inherit it. God recognized the spiritual strength and fervor of Caleb. And he's the one that first testified that Caleb's whole heart was devoted to the Lord. As we have already stated, God does not look at our age, our size, our color, or our skills. He looks at our heart. And if our hearts are right with God, if our eyes are on the Lord, if we are committed to His kingdom, He will equip us, He will empower us, and He will use us for His glory in this place. We have to believe that. And thirdly, Caleb trusted God. Caleb gave a wonderful speech in verse 10. Go back to there again, verse 10. Now then, just as the Lord promised, He has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses when Israel moved about in the desert. So here I am today, 85 years old. I'm as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out and battle, to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord has promised to me on that day. A great speech. Caleb survived the wilderness and he's alive at 85 because God had protected him all those years. Caleb walked with God by faith. His heart was right with God. Caleb claimed the promise that God had given to him 45 years earlier. And Caleb committed himself to following and obeying the will of God in his life. He loved God. He worshiped God. He prayed to God. He enjoyed God's presence. And he stepped up to the challenge because God had promised. Is it possible for someone to say, I love the Lord and I'm a believer and expect to be in heaven and yet seldom ever come to church or ever get involved in church. Can we truly say that we're wholeheartedly devoted to God if we sit by and let other folks do what God has called us to do? We used to sing an old song back at Little Rock, Must I be carried through the skies on flowery beds of ease, while others fight to win the prize and sail through bloody seas. Will we just coast away our, our time on this earth hoping to get to heaven? Or are we like Caleb, willing to take a risk to step out of that comfort zone and to go where God has called us to go to the future? Many are afraid to step out on faith and to trust God to help them in the future. But Proverbs tells us to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, depend upon Him. Lean upon Him, and He will guide your paths. We can always trust God to be with us and to help us in our service to the Lord. I want to challenge you this morning. As XYZers or generation boomers, or generation Xers, or Yers, or Zers. Or if you're in the nursery, I want to challenge you eight A's uh, to commit yourself to serving the Lord. With God's help, I will drive out the giants 
and claim this land for Jesus? How about helping to create a great generation? It begins with claiming the promises God has given to you. It requires overcoming obstacles and excuses and all those good reasons we think for not getting involved in, in the Lord's work, the barriers that Satan brings before us. And it involves, lastly, leaning upon the Lord. If God calls me to do it, he will equip me to do it. He will help me to do it. And with his help, we will accomplish what God has called us to do. Are you willing to make your generation a great generation? You've got to talk like Caleb. You've got to think like Caleb. You've got to act like Caleb. And you need to obey like Caleb. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the great example of this Old Testament saint, Caleb, who did not let anything stand in his way. Fears, limitations, age, conflict, or giants in the land. Nothing kept him from being obedient. Lord, help us to follow his example even today. And we will praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our invitation hymn is hymn number 305. I have decided to follow Jesus. Caleb certainly did. I hope you will as well.
Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for being such a powerful witness to the community and, and to one another. Uh, you young folks out here, you pay attention to what you see in the life of these XYZers. They're setting a great example, but an example isn't enough unless you're following it. So please learn to follow good examples in your life that God can continue to bless this church. Um, Remember the XYZ years, those of you who have made reservations, there, are, there is a meal waiting for us in the fellowship hall. If you're going to eat inside, you go this way. If you're going to take out, you go this way. I don't know if there's food over there or not, but they said to go this direction. <laughs> I know which way I'm going. <laughs> but if you're going to take out, they, they'll have it ready for you over here. Go through these doors to the fellowship hall. Okay, uh, let's pray and then we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you. Lord, you're good to us. You love us. You provide for us in so many ways. Lord, it's a, it's a joy to worship with your people at Mount Zion Church. And for those who may be tuning in because they're just not going anywhere, Lord, I pray that you lay a burden upon them to make sure they are in church among God's people to hear your word and to respond to it openly and outwardly. And Father, I just pray that you'll continue to bless this church in the days to come. Thank you for the food that we'll enjoy. Uh, Lord, I uh, pray you'll give us strength to it for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we leave, let's sing together the chorus of In the Sweet, By and By. Sing together. In the sweet. In